Did it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the stream and a very happy Magic Monday, one and all. <sighs> it is the last Magic Monday before the release of uh, Outlaws at, uh, of Thunder Junction here on Arena. Wait, today. this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what we play on Magic Monday? <laughs> Amazing. Only once, Amy. <laughs> Only once. And there again. I mean, you know, if it's April Fool's Day again, we'll <laughs> maybe try to come up with something a little bit more original. <laughs> maybe. I thought that was a good idea. I thought it was cute. Yeah. I just mean doing it again wouldn't be very uh, original. Well, yeah, I suppose not. <laughs> uh, C. Holland is here in chat saying hey with a wave. What is going on, C. Holland? Happy Magic Monday. Yeah, tell us what's been going on with you. Correct. Man in the Hat is also here saying happy Magic Monday. What is up, Man in the Hat? Happy Magic Monday to you as well. Nice to see you. Great to see you both. I, I, I think I'm going to try this. I don't know, man. Welcome to Remix Draft, a new limited format pulling from across all sets on Arena. This is Remix Draft Artifacts, where the spotlight is on artifacts across the multiverse. Interesting. Very interesting. I was like, what is he going to try that's going to be like so <laughs> different from the norm? That's pretty different. Yeah. Marcus is here saying, sup. What is up, Marcus? Happy Magic Monday to you as well. Yes. I did not forget that we want to test out Ginny Faye tonight. We will absolutely do that after this is over. But I figured we'd start with this. It is This is like their answer to Cube, I think, uh, from for this round. Because um, the new set does release on Arena tomorrow. Um, if anybody did get out to a pre-release this weekend... Give us the deets. Let us know how it went for you. We would love to know. Yeah, please don't put your phone number in chat. No, don't do that. Can't uh, can't advise against that strongly enough. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control an artifact, this guy gets plus two plus one until end of turn. And if you control three or more, he also gains first strike until end of turn. Mm. Okay. All right. And he's a one minute one one. He's our rare. I'll take it. He's a cool dude. Yeah. 
Works for me. Followed immediately by Visionary Augmenter, mm. which is a four mana two one fabricate two, which means it can either come in with two plus one plus one counters on it or two one one servos. Yeah. Our choice. Uh, Juggernaut attacks each combat if able and can't be blocked by walls. There is servo schematic when it enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard. We make a servo. There's just disenchant, which would actually be very good in this format. Another Richard Kane Ferguson art. Yes, that's right. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought you were going to put like 8, 6, 7, 5, 3, oh, nine. <laughs> um, there's I said just... that in two sing song a manner. Now we're just going to get like... Dinged for it? I yeah. think we'll be fine. Uh, I think I'm going to take Candy Grapple. Eh, I guess it's disenchant. We can stay in our colors and still have a solid piece of removal, for this format at least. Oh, Sunder Shaman. That's mm. a very good card. That foot, though. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a four mana 5-5. Five, five. Mm. It can't be blocked by more than one creature. And whenever he deals combat damage to a player, destroy one of their artifact or enchantments. Uh, the Untethered Express... But there's a recommission. Return an artifact or a creature with a mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If it's a creature, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. I'll take it. That's a good one. Untethered Express is not bad. It's a four mana four four trample vehicle with crew one. And whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it because it's untethered. It just keeps going and getting faster. <laughs> yeah, except that wouldn't happen because it's like driving on sand. <laughs> it would just like sink its ass right into that. <laughs> Whenever you cast your third spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on this. Then it deals damage equal to its power to any target. That's a lot of things. I'm going to get that. A jacket where the epaulets are just cannons. cannons. Smart. Very yeah, smart. Yeah, I know it's smart. <laughs> Clearly. That's why I'm doing it. All right. Let's uh, take a Chrome Courier. Uh Three mana, one, one flyer. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top two cards of your library. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. If you put an artifact into your hand, you gain three life. Hmm. I could do white, blue artifacts. Why not? Yeah. Affinity for artifacts. Uh, three and two white for uh, an instant. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. I'm probably going to take the old tech cloud guard, though. Four mana, three, two flyer. When it enters, make a one, one colorless gnome artifact creature token. I like that one, because the bat is cute. That's right. It's being ridden by a human soldier. I want to ride that bat. You do? Yes. Aw, but Amy. (gasps) A crab. (laughs) It's hard evidence. He's a detective, guys. (laughs) That crab is a detective. He's so smart and talented. (laughs) Love him. I know you do. Maybe next time. Uh... Eye of Malcator is three mana for an artifact when it enters Scry 2. Whenever another artifact enters under our control, uh, it becomes a 4-4 until end of turn. Oh, that's pretty good. So we could take that, or we could take another disenchant. Mm. <sighs> or bake into a pie. I th- oh, that's rough. I guess we just take disenchant. Which enchant? Disenchant. <laughs> yes, Scotter. Uh, another disenchant. <laughs> there is another disenchant. Just get a play set of disenchants. <laughs> but there's also a Razor Tide Bridge, which is an artifact land with indestructible that can that enters tapped, but then can tap for white or blue. Okay. So I'll take that. Um, there's another artifact land that types taps for white or red. It's the same thing as the last one. I'll take it over a mirrored and Bardiche. It's five mana. Um, so I'll take that. So if we want to splash red, we can. There's another mirror and Bardiche. There's a reason these keep going around. Uh, there's a Scrapwork Mutt, which I guess is a fine card. And there's the land. Maybe I've just taken lands. If nobody else has taken them, I'll take lands. Sure. Hey, look, Candy Grapple came back. Why? The card's great. Draw two, discard one, create a tapped Power Stone token. And the Power Stone tokens can be used to cast artifacts. So, sure. I'll take it. Stern Lesson. Ah, Silver Bluff Bridge. And since we have the Rustvale Bridge, 
I'll, I mean, I'll take I'll take lands. Yeah, yeah. No, no issues with land. I'll take a mere kinsmith. When it enters, we can search for a, a mirror, which we might find more of because this is a draft. Look at these guys, Amy. Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> I knew you'd love them. Ooh, a mythic. That's fancy. Four mana for a four five flyer. Uh, when a uh, vehicle crew three, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top five cards of our library. We may reveal a historic card from among them and put it into our hand. Artifacts are historic. And then we can put the rest wow. on the bottom of our library in a random order. <laughs> sure, I'll take it. It's a mythic. It works very well for us. I don't really care what else was in the pack because it kind of doesn't matter. We have the Ozolith. Um, we don't have much uh, in the way of counters right now. So I kind of don't care about the Ozolith. I'll do it for you. Bards. One. Nice. Two. Very nice. When it enters, create a 1 1 Thopter with flying and then attach Barbed Spike to it. And the equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 0, and you can equip for 2. See, Holland already did it for you with 5 5 5 1 2 3 4. That's right. That's very right. And Man in the Hat says, Best Forrest Gump voice, Ginny! <laughs> With two sideways crying laughing faces. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not up on my Forrest Gump, but I could try. He's like, Ginny, or something like that. Especially with one word, it's a little bit harder to do the to do the voice. But I tried. I promise. Oh no, Amy. My eye is itching. Oh, the detective. I'll take it. Crab detective. <laughs> I got a lot of four drops right now, so I will take the hard evidence. There's another Captain Ripley Vance. This guy's Fabricate One. Um, there's the bridge. There's another hard evidence. Uh, what is Mirror Sire? When it dies, make a mirror. Interesting. Is he a hard shell crab? Uh, probably. <laughs> probably, if I had to guess. Yeah, it's a three mana two two. That could be a three three. Sure, I'll take it. Why not? Citizen's Arrest. Hell Ew. yeah. Good card. That's disgusting. <laughs> I love it. Okay. What do you do? Moon Snare Prototype. Tap an untapped artifact or creature you control to add a colorless or channel it for five. Discard it and the owner of target non-land permanent puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Their choice. Okay. Cogworkers Puzzle Knot. Oh. When it enters, we make a servo, and then we can tap two, sack it, and make a servo. There's another hard evidence, by the way. Another Rustvale Bridge. A Mirror Enforcer. Seven mana, four, four, affinity for artifacts. Ooh. I'm going to take that. That's a good one. I want the DJ. The DJ? Yeah. Where? Oh. <laughs> the Tawashi Song Shaper. Um, what is this? There are one more creature you can show the combat damage will player investigate. I'll just take the land, I guess. Okay. See, Helen says, surprise they haven't put any affinity for artifacts cards in the draft. We just, we just found the one. <laughs> Conveniently enough, Mirror Enforcer. Plus, there's an instant with affinity for artifacts in here that we saw that, like, gives your creatures plus two plus one or whatever. He says, oopsie, LOL. So I assume that's when <laughs> and said, he realized, yeah, spoke too soon. Yeah. yeah. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> we found it. We got there. I'll take the Cogworkers Puzzle Knot. Probably not going to take this. Alloy Mirror taps to add one mana of any color. Sure, why not? Over the land? Sure. Um, ah, Scrapwork Cohort cares about white. I'll take it. Sure. <sighs> we could take your friends again. You want to take your friends again? Yeah. Okay. What about a scrapbook cohort? Yes. Ooh, we get to take another hard evidence, Amy. Nice. We can and all go to Michael's and get some scrapbooking <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Thought Monitor. Speaking Ooh. of affinity for artifacts, it's a 2-2 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, we draw two cards. It's we've insane. got... Yeah. Uh, we've got Ancestral Blade, two mana. When it enters, make a soldier, then attach this to it. So it would be a 1-1 soldier, and it would get plus 1 plus 1 with being equipped. And then at any later point, we could tap 1 and re-equip this to something else. 
Uh, reverse Engineer is five mana with Improvise, so we can tap our artifacts to cast the spell. And we draw three cards. There's the Razor Tide Bridge for ourselves. Foundry Inspector. Ooh. Ooh. I think I'm still going to take Thought Monitor, but Foundry Inspector, good card. Whirler Rogue, A. Eh? I like that one quite a bit. Mm. Four mana, two, two. When it enters, make two Thopters. And then we can tap two untapped artifacts we control, and target creature can't be blocked this turn. Nice. It's a good one. I love that land art at the bottom. Very pretty. Yeah. Slag woods. Nice. Very nice. Uh, exile target creature, then proliferate for five mana. I mean, removal is important, right? When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four. You can reveal an artifact and put it into your hand and the rest in the bottom. Whenever one or more artifacts enters the battlefield under your control, put a counter on this. It triggers only once each turn. It's a two mana one one, and we have no five drops. I guess I'll take Wanderer's Strike then. As our first five mana card, Blink Moth Nexus. Okay. Mm, but there's Arcbound Mauser with Modular. It's mm, as a one mana card, Terrarian. We have to sack it. It does have flying, I guess, when it becomes a creature. Sure. All right. Perfect. So, yeah, I'll take the Blink Moth Nexus. Why not? Static Net. Good nice. removal. What are other people taking? There's an Oaken Siren as well. Ooh, damn it. <laughs> we're really, I feel like we're the only ones in these colors. Like, why are we getting all these good cards? Okay, sure. I mean, I'll take it. It's good. Um, Waylaying Pirates. When it enters, we control an artifact. Tap an artifact or creature they control and put a stun counter on it. I mean, yeah. Yes, please. We probably will control an artifact. That's kind of the point of the deck, right? Cogwork Wrestler. How many creatures do we have right now? Eleven? But we just Ooh. took away laying pirates. We could take another one. Mm. Sure. I'll flash this guy in and shrink their stuff sometimes, I guess. Brute Suit. Vigilance Crew 1. But there's a Gold Warden's Helm. Equipped creature gets plus 0, plus 1. For two mana? And it's three to play. Yeah, fine. Stern Lessons is <laughs> a good one. I was like, don't look at me, man. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you may sack another creature or artifact, and when you do, put two, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two creatures. Or there's the four mana, three, three flyer. Whenever an artifact enters, you may draw and then discard. Mm. I'll try that. Uh, another Wanderer's Strike I will take happily. The Eye of Malkator finally came back to us. Ah. Okay. Uh, a mere Sire as well. And a Scream Puff. You're a mere Sire. I know. I'm so mere. <laughs> I am no mere Sire. <laughs> what are you then? I don't know. Whatever I want to be. This I guy playing magic. That's right. Some, some guy. Uh, okay, well... We need six cuts. One, two, three. Just four. pick random cards. Um, oh, we have two stern lessons. It's fine, I guess. We could probably get rid of barbed spike. Um, mana value three or less. We don't have a ton. We'll get rid of that. We can probably get rid of the puzzle knot as well. Um... What else do we want to get rid of? Cohort. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff in chat here. Uh, Man in the Hat says, may I share some news with y'all? Absolutely, Man Please in the Hat. Please do, yeah. Um, C. Holland says, surprised they... You read that already. Oh. Because um, then you read these. Oh, I see. 
Uh, he says God is good all the time. Okay. Gives us what we ask for, right? I don't... Do I need this alloy mirror? I don't think I do. Why do I have so many... <laughs> I took so many land, and I'm still only playing two colors. I don't need all these. One, two, three... Oh, I probably took out the one that I actually wanted, right? Whatever. <laughs> um, and Erica is here with a heart. What's up, Erica? Happy Magic Monday. How are you? I asked before if anybody got out to a pre-release. Um, I know Man in the Hat you don't really play, but for C. Holland and Erica, if you, if either of you got out to a pre-release or were able to pick up any product or anything, let us know. I'll probably regale people with my pre-release stories later. But All right, so we don't need Alloy Mirror then if that's the case, and then we can just play the Dirty 41. Mm, sounds good. Yeah. Um... See, Helen says, sadly not. Fair enough. You want your friends as our deck box? Yeah. They're awesome. And what about our sleeves? Sleeves. I want the fruitcake man. Fruitcake elemental? Yeah. You got it. You want this companion? Yeah. Okay. We're going to have the coolest deck ever. <laughs> Um, Erica says, nah, I haven't opened a pack of magic cards in probably close to a year. Okay. Wow. For me, it's been just over 24 hours. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> but also, uh, in those big opening videos, I opened a lot of packs this week. Yeah. I opened a lot of cards this week. So much product. And I have more to do. There's more um, boxes behind me. I'm sure you can't see it, but they're on the table behind me. I have three more pre-release kits to open that will be coming out. Those videos will be coming out this week. Nice. Three, four, and four? Or not those videos. One of those videos will be coming out this week. Sorry. I want to set unrealistic expectations because I'm not paying attention to what I'm saying. Oh, no. Hard evidence. Well, it was a turn late, but we can still do it. There he is, Amy. Yeah. Crowd detective. That's right. I don't know if he's actually a detective, but yeah, I mean, that's just the narrative I gave him. Sure, yeah. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Uh, so choose one to put into your hand. The Eye of Malkator, thanks. Uh, no attacks for zero. That doesn't make sense. Look at him. He's not attacking people. No. <laughs> I mean, I can absolutely see him attacking people right now. <laughs> oh, we drew Waylaying Pirates. What are you doing again? If you control an artifact, tap one of their creatures. Well, they don't have any creatures. Uh, so I guess we go to combat, attack for one, hit them, and then play the Koi. Okay, let's see. See, Helen says... Friend wanted to take family to a football soccer uh, game, so had to dog sit. Oh, interesting. Okay, how did that go? Uh, Erica says that we should play some brawl tonight, so I can play against the Jenny Fay deck. Yes, we uh, we Heart. mentioned earlier. Yeah, especially when we uh, when we saw Marcus enter, we were like, "Don't worry, we didn't forget." So, yeah, no no worries whatsoever. We will definitely uh, get to that. Yep. Um, I mean... I guess we scry two. Their team won, see Helen says. Nice. Oh, we want to keep these the way they are. Then we want to draw and discard. Take the action. Uh, and then go to combat, swing with those two flyers. Come on. Perfect. Uh, and end our turn. So I can keep up disenchant on their turn, but at the end of their turn, if they haven't cast anything that I want to disenchant, we can crack our clue that we got from our good crab friend over here. He found that evidence, Amy. Yeah, because he's a detective. He is a detective. Not much I can do to refute that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's the best crab there is. <laughs> Crime fighting crab. Mm -hmm. When it enters the battlefield, investigate twice. 
That's pretty good. And it's a 3-2 flyer. Good thing I have static net right here. And they create a food token. You got it. They attack for three, I assume. They don't. Cool. I'm going to crack this clue. Uh, Erica says it's so nice today, but... Or which as a consequence means I'm too warm <laughs> the sweating uh, and hot face. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I turned off the heat because it was 75 degrees in here. Mm -hmm. Now it's 74. <laughs> <laughs> so it did a lot. Right, I'm going to static net this, gain two life, get a tap power stone, uh, decline the draw again. And then uh, swing with everybody but my crab again. Attack for eight. Attack the crab. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. And they're at seven. And we're at 25. Ah, okay. They killed our 3 3 flyer. You got it. They have a 3 3 defender. As long as an artifact entered the battlefield under their control that turn, it can attack as though it didn't have a defender. Got it, got it. Nice. Cool. Uh, well, um, I guess we play Waylaying Pirates. I control multiple artifacts, in fact. Uh, and so I will tap the Contagious Vorak and put a stun counter on it. Which works good, good. Then I'll play this artifact... Because when an artifact enters, the Eye of Malkator becomes a 4-4 four -four again. Mm -hmm. Then we go to combat and attack with both of them. The 4-4 four -four and the 1-1 one -one flyer. They do decide to block. Good, good. Combat trip? Yeah. Trades? Oh, yeah. but indestructible. Okay. So my creature dies, theirs doesn't. <clears throat> it's fine. It's only incidentally a 4-4. Four -four. It's not always a 4-4. Four -four. And I didn't have I don't have ways of making artifacts right now. Sure. Uh, I just have disenchants. So. Alright, so for each other modified creature you control, of which they have one because it has a plus one plus one counter on it, so he's a three-three. You got it. Nice. Uh byway courier, when it dies, they can investigate. We drew Cogwork Wrestler. Yeah. And I flash it in. One of their creatures gets minus two minus O oh until end of turn. So That's so cool. You like them? Yeah. Good, I'm glad. Uh, I'm going to go to combat. And I'm going to attack with the 4-4, four, four, the 3-3, three, three, and the 1-1. One, one. Let's see what they do. Yeah. Ooh, double blocks, eh? Ooh. Okay, well, there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. But I can kill this guy, I suppose. But hold on. If I view the battlefield, no. That dying doesn't do enough. Um, okay, interesting. So that's fine. Uh, I'll still flash it in. Two, three, six. So I can save the waylaying pirates. But that's it. So I'll flash this in. Uh, minus two, minus zero here to save the pirates. And that's it. Okay, they go to five, and we end our turn. Uh, the Lord Sephiroth is here saying hi. What's up, Lord Sephiroth? Happy Magic Monday. Yeah. Good to see you. So they drew another card. Let's end our turn. I'm going to take a quick bio break. They draw another card. Okay. Yeah, Erica, we haven't gotten to the point yet. You mentioned being too warm. We haven't gotten to the point yet of uh, needing to turn on our AC, but I know it's coming soon. Whether we want it to or not. They said oops because they forgot to play their land, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, uh... Do we take our turn? I could destroy an artifact, but I don't see a need. But of course we drew a land. It's alright, I'll keep the patented Geek for All hand land up. Um, they just have a 4-4, four -four, so I can't really do anything right now. Unfortunate. Pass. They're at 5, we're at 25. 
but they have stopped our attacks for a little while. Uh, enters with an oil counter. It has a plus one, plus one counter for each oil counter on it. And whenever another creature enters, if that creature has greater power, they put an oil counter on it. Got it. Okay. Taken three. No blocks. Okay. How does that math work out? If they don't have another flyer, do we... Can we win? Uh, if they keep attacking? I'm sure eventually they'll stop attacking, but... Um, land. 3-2... Make a tap power stone. And then that thing gets another oil counter, of course. Where's that one of the... I need one of those blue card draw spells that I have. That's not it. Although, it works, right? It makes another O3 crab. And we get to investigate, which means we get to draw another card. So let's do that. Leaving us with four mana and a... I was going to say, and a land to play if we have to, to play whatever we draw. But instead we drew another land. Hooray. Okay, uh, well. Combat. We can still attack for one and put them to four. Because they have no reach and no flying untapped. So put them to four. Perfect. Okay. And we end our turn. gonna waste a disenchant <laughs> they said nice thanks islands over plains joe what do you mean i got a lot more yes i got a lot more islands than i do planes right now but you mean i should have played the island over playing the planes all right so still has more power so they get another oil counter this thing do they can sack a food and make it bigger too bad I destroyed your food already. Five damage to target creature. It dies. That's how it should be. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, yeah, you know, in the history of magic, blue is definitely traditionally more powerful. Oh, God. Um, why aren't you playing any artifacts? Isn't this the artifact uh, draft? They're attacking for 10. I guess I gotta give myself the best chance and take it all and go to 12. I will take my turn. They left their... Come on, man. <sighs> unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> of course. Of course. They just swing them with everybody yet, or no? Well, they can't swing with their defender. They didn't have an artifact enter this turn. Yeah, the crabs aren't doing anything else for us, so might as well block. Take three, go to nine. Sorry, crab friends. Amy will be upset when she gets back, but if I could draw anything besides a land. Hey, holy shit, we have something. Too bad it's definitely not going to help us. We're so dead. Um, that's so annoying. Okay. We sure can attack for one and then immediately die when they swing out with everything next turn. Sometimes uh, we block the biggest, which is the 4-4, four four, and take a million. We're at negative six. Thank you, Mox Ghost. I read everything but this last one. Okay. Uh, Lord Sephiroth says probably capitalizing on the assumed maybe Correct. artifact eight yeah yeah um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna hope that that was an anomaly if we lose another game like that with two disenchants just sitting in my hand doing nothing i'll cut one of them but 
this is still an artifact draft, so that could have been, like I said, that could have been an anomaly. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, two lands. I mean, maybe it's fine. Shh. I'm going to mulligan. Okay. That's better. I'll keep this. I'm going to have to put this on the bottom. Do I have a way of searching my library for something? I think I might, but I don't recall. Servant of the Scale is a 1-1. One, one. When it dies, put its counters on one of their creatures. Okay. Hard evidence. Good blocker for a little while. Our last opponent killed both of our crabs, Amy. Ugh. It was because I chose to block with them, but I was, you know, I needed to, to, to live. <laughs> Uh, pass. Well, I guess we're having crab for dinner tonight. <laughs> Sounds great. A 4-4 four, four, trample on turn three, and they make a food token. Oh, the 99 has lobster rolls right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I guess I was supposed to do this before they played their 4-4. Four, four. It like, didn't register in my mind, but yeah, you always bolt the bird, huh? We're also flooding out again, deck. If we could, like, not do that, that'd be great. Just just the tits, really. Because <laughs> um, the second game in a row is not cool. <laughs> okay. 4-4 four, four trample attacks. 5-6-6 six, six trample attacks. Oh! That seems like an odd choice, but sure. Let's do it. We take six? I wasn't blocking the six-six anyway. Oh, because they can put more counters on things. I get it. Probably should have blocked the other way. I don't remember what cards do, man. I'm going to play this flyer. Uh, Marcus says, thanks for the love on the turtle pick. There may be a bidding war happening. Oh, Hell yeah. Sick. That's awesome. Well, it looks incredible now that it's colored in and outlined. Like, what a difference. What the hell is happening? Our deck seemed really cool. <laughs> like, really cool. And, uh... We're at eight. And I can't draw anything but lands, <laughs> apparently. Hey, guess what? Let's draw another card. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> well, we gotta play this. And I guess we'll get rid of their Trampler? That makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, it still has two layers of detail left, but I'm super happy with it. Good. Really? What might those be? Because <laughs> I think it looks great the way it is. Yeah. Uh, Lord Sephiroth says, Synergy relies on other cards, whereas standalone cards are good in solo play. How are basic lands in solo play? What do we think? <laughs> what do we think? How are, how are basics? Basics are good. We like basics. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so angry. Okay. Arena likes basics. Yeah, I think Clearly. Arena likes me liking basics. Uh -huh. Liking basics. Yeah. Okay. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Basics being thrust upon you against your will. Yep. Do they choose to attack here? They do, huh? They don't. Oh, thank God. Okay. Aw, look at how cute he is. Land. Oh no, we're so flooded. We have nothing else. You should definitely attack with that 5-5 five five that you debated on attacking with last turn. The Ozolith. Okay, sure. Is it all counters or one of each? Whatever could you... Leave? If it had counters on it, put those counters. So yeah, all of them. Alright, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Bring it on. Jesus. Attack. They didn't attack our past two attackers. Yeah. Good. <laughs> past two blockers... Double block. They order. And then I flash in Cogwork Wrestler. So they only kill the Glint Sleeve Artisan and not the Ultech Cloud Guard. Awesome. It is good. I like my flyer. And their creature, their only creature, dies. Nice. Obviously they get counters on their Ozolith and their Explorer's Cache. We have Sky Swimmer Koi. It's rainbow fish. 
Uh, I will attack them for four. Perfect. I'll just play a Sky Swarmer Koi. Because now, keeping the hand land works for multiple reasons. One, if they have like a... I mean, they're in... They're not in the colors for it, but if they have a um, a discard spell, they may be more um, interested in casting it um, and making me discard a card. But if not, if an artifact enters, I can draw a card and discard this land. So, Erica says, Joe, I love you, but I also love seeing you visibly start thinking... Why do I play this terrible game? Uh. <laughs> Amazing, Erica. Hey! Th- wow. Look! <laughs> How exciting. All right, well, let's hope they don't have haste or eight power of haste off the top. How's that sound? All right. Uh, Marcus says skin and shell texturing, more shadow. Detail on all the instruments and the background. Wow. Okay. That sounds like four things. <laughs> I was uh, I was actually very close to correct. They got a seven seven haste. Mm, great. Uh, off the top of their deck. Aren't you so glad to be right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it's whenever it leaves. It's not even dies. That's BS right there. All right, fine. I've learned my lesson. You're at 12. I'll attack for exactly six in the air as well. And I'll pass. Holy shit. Um, they said good game. Yeah. Good, good, good game? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Zerky C. Mm-hmm. I think so. Wow. That was a very scary game of magic. Okay. <laughs> Look. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. Jesus. All right, well, so let's let's check really quickly the deck here, because now we're one and one. Oh, thanks. Uh, I didn't cut my draw spells. Okay, good. And I don't have any more. Okay, we're good then. Uh, Lord Sephiroth says, not liking magic. I could never imagine hating this game. It's always fun and never frustrating. <laughs> well, are you saying that facetiously, or are you saying that because you do tr- just truly love magic that much? Because either one, I feel like, would work in this particular situation correct. for you to say. Yeah. So I'm just asking what you intend. I'm going to keep this hand. Um, even though we don't have white, we have card draw with um, the clue token and everything. And uh, Whirler Rogue and stuff. Yeah, there's the white. Perfect. Perfect. He says, I'll let you decide. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love that. That's very funny. Uh, no attacks, but we do get Eye of Malkator next turn. That's good. <clears throat> yeah. 1-1. One, one. Whenever they cast an artifact spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And um, it has Ward 2. Okay. Let's play the Eye. Next turn, we can play Mirror... Mere Kinsmith. Thank God for Scry 2, huh? Holy shit, deck. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, Marcus taught me. Islands over planes. <laughs> Put the island closer to the top than the planes. <laughs> Marcus says the first three are just parts of one. The background is its own can of worms. That sounds right. Okay, sure. That sounds right. (laughs) He says, good job, Joe. (laughs) Thanks, Marcus. (laughs) I blocked. Yeah, they didn't attack. Okay. Land, Whirler Rogue. Pass. Oh, right. It becomes a 4-4. Never mind. Don't pass. Combat. Uh Swing for four. Okay. Because... If they block here, it's great for me. And if they don't, it's great for me. Because it's not going to be a creature on their turn. So might as well get in for four. And yes, I will absolutely use the Whirler Rogue to block the Foundry Inspector, not the Patchwork Automaton. <clears throat> right now they are mono black. Uh, and notably, we do have Disenchant for um, their Foundry Inspector on our next turn. 
I'm so glad you clarified all of that because I was thinking it, but you know, <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. The, jo- <laughs> the joke is she wasn't thinking that at all. The joke is I have literally no fucking clue what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, hey, look, Amy, it's a germ, a Phyrexian germ. Aw, you look so sad. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you be? <laughs> look at if it. I looked like that, I probably <laughs> would be sad. <laughs> yep. Wait, is that his mouth? I think this is his mouth here. Uh, I or think is this it is that reddish eye. thing over there? This? I, it's hard to tell. I know. Who the hell knows? <laughs> All right, let's see the, I guess, combat trick, because I'm definitely doing this block. Well, it has sad eyes. <laughs> Unless, they... of course, those things aren't eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Do they and... not have a combat? What are they doing? It de- like I said, it definitely has eyes. This right here is an eye. Right, that's what I feel like. Yeah. Okay, they just had a kill spell for Candy Grapple, or with Candy Grapple. Uh, okay. It looks like the baby in BP. Or... PT. PT. BP is a gas station. I... <laughs> <laughs> I always get the letters mixed up with like a zillion other things. That's amazing. Um, I played that game once, and it was terribly repetitive <laughs> and awful. But the baby was cute. Oh, my God. Combat, attack, uh, like that, with the flyers. And then I'll play the... I guess I could have done this first, right? It's fine. I'll play the mere Kinsmith and go search for a mirror. Yes, I know. It becomes a 4-4. Four, four, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I will find... How many artifacts do I have right now? One, two, three, four. So this becomes a three mana four four. I'll take it. Mirror Enforcer. Nice. Yeah. The Lord Sephiroth says I'm building five color human decks. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. So many things are happening now. Reckoner Bankbuster. And Untethered Express. This uh patchwork automaton's getting a little out of hand. To be fair, as is this germ, but very patchwork. That. That's right. And very ill, I guess. <laughs> yeah, only the two five fives are attacking. I guess I could just block one with the germ. Or the, um, not the germ. The um, crab here. You're going you're gonna to give the germ crabs? That's right. <laughs> it knows what it did. <laughs> so many diseases, so little time. <laughs> All right, here's a land. Uh, exile target creature, then proliferate. I mean... Because I could, but I could also just play this and disenchant. So yeah, I'll play the Mirror Enforcer. I will make a 4-4. Four, four. Great. Um, I will then destroy Foundry Inspector. I know, all the other creatures are bigger, but Foundry Inspector is very good and annoying. Uh, Lord Sephiroth says, oh, I read that already. Marcus says commander, so I guess he's asking that of the five color human death. Correct. Okay. I mean, I can go to combat if they let me and attack for two in the air, putting them to 12. We're tied at 12, everybody. Yay, 12 tie. Hooray. Um... You're twinning because you're tied at 12. That's right. The twining twins tied at 12? Yeah. Hmm. What does this thing do? Two tap, remove charge counter from it to draw a card. If there are no charge counters on it, make a treasure. And a 1-1 one, one pilot. Okay. Okay. They're thinking real hard, though. About whatever they're doing with their... They have three cards in hand just like we do. But they are a mono black deck. We're two colors, sort of. <laughs> we have one planes <laughs> that we drew early, but we've still been able to cast everything, so... They baked my Mirror Enforcer into a pie. It's not going to taste very good. 
Why? Because a mirror is an artifact. It's made of metal. Oh. <laughs> you, they've baked metal into a pie. <laughs> You'll a, get all the minerals you need oh, out of it. God, terrible idea. What a terrible idea. All right. Uh, taking 10. Going to 2. Okay. Yikes. Yep. Uh, well, I could play... Oh, yeah. I could do this, huh? Uh, it would have to be the germ. Um... But it works. So sure. Germ. Tapped and has a stun counter. Toolcraft Exemplar. Nice. Three two first strike. Um, then I will still lose because they have a five five trample. Um I think. Or a six six trample when they attack with it next turn. So I'll say no attacks. It's not like the two damage is gonna really make that much of a difference. <clears throat> and I will never I guess unless they leave it back on blocks for some ungodly reason I will not be able to use this on their train ever because it needs to be a creature and they're not going to crew their their um, untethered express on my turn they're only going to do it on their turn and attack me with it so it's only on my turn forgot about that that's unfortunate as well okay well i tried they're still thinking real hard <laughs> you're so jangly over there <laughs> yeah my earrings they wiggle and jingle <clears throat> yeah they do Sucks a lot. 6-6. Six, six. Um, which means I have to triple block and hope they don't have anything. But if they do, I'm dead anyway. So I'll triple block and see what they've got. I'll, on board, I go to 1. Let's see if that changes. There's a very strong weed smell right now. Just oh, yeah. sitting in our living room. Yep. Okay, it worked. We're at 1. But don't worry. Nothing bad is going to happen. Mm. I had already seen the card coming out. Oh. They kill that. Ooh, we drew static net, though. We just don't have enough mana for everything. Two life. We don't even have enough mana to target their 5-5. Five five. We're just, like, dead, like, three ways. Um, to Sunday? Yeah. That was yesterday. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Actually, this might still work. Get rid of the germ, because it's what we can do. Gain two life, go to three. Leave back the one blocker. Eh, this becomes a 4-4. Four, four. I can't do anything else about it. So, Or with it, I mean. So I might as well attack for four. Bring them to eight. It's not nothing. It's not nothing. Uh, and then... They draw a card. You got it. They make a food. Okay, so they can gain some life. That's frustrating. Oh, they already had a food from big into a pie. My bad. What does this do? Create a wicked roll attached to a creature. Plus one, plus one, and when it's put into the graveyard, we lose one life. Okay. Well, at least we're back to three and not a one anymore, because they could have like found a way to like sack a creature or like make me block to kill it or something. Another food. That's three food tokens. Oh, but she can sack a food and make me lose two, huh? Okay. So I'm dead. Uh, block the, the bigger one. Whew. Okay. Thank you, Bobble. Well. Let's try again. We are one and two. Is that correct? Yeah classic <laughs> <laughs> it's not cube but it's cube and like isn't that just how my cube experience <laughs> always goes <laughs> sure i will say right yesterday at pre-release uh i went we played four rounds right best of three games or matches uh and i went undefeated i went eight and oh that's pretty cool. It was very cool. 
Turns out the Selesnia Mounts deck is very good if you get the right cards for it. And I sure did. I actually splashed red because I had two of the um, deserts, the green red and the white red desert. And I had the white red fast land as well. Nice. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I guess I like have to now. Uh, well, we sure don't have blue in this hand. But we sure do have our mythic for the first time in this entire draft and our rare land for the first time in this entire draft. Uh, Erica says, just strap a saddle on my back and call me a good girl. <laughs> you can mount all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. not for nothing. Um, the number of times I um, saddled up my giant beaver, it's a very good card. It's like <laughs> it's like genuinely good, so I know I'm going to be playing it a lot if I get the opportunity. So, you know, just going to be talking about saddling up my giant beaver all the time. You're welcome and or I'm sorry, but I'm not really sorry. It's not my fault. So <laughs> just throwing that out there. Uh, I'm going to just disenchant this thing. It's a bird and you always bolt the bird. They're playing the same kind of deck we are, it seems. But we didn't take the Oaken Siren. They did. Ah, never mind. Ooh, but we may have taken them off blue. That's a thing that might be uh, happening. That's cool. Uh, sure, I will make this into a 1-1 one -one that can attack you. Combat. Uh, attackers. Wow. Okay, sure. Beaver, I hardly know her, Erica says. <laughs> well, get to know her. <laughs> it's Oh, in fact, one of the <laughs> one of the guys I played um one of the guys I played, I I was like I was like, I'm going to play this giant beaver. And he goes, oh, my X was printed on a card. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> it was very, very funny. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, well, I mean, I drew a blue. It's just enters tapped. That's all. They have the same one. Mm. Like I said, they, we have very similar decks. It's just that, you know. Take three. Crew three, huh? Hey, look. Yeah. <laughs> they have an awesome crab detective <laughs> who finds clues because it's smart. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm going to play Citizen's Arrest on the Arcanist Owl. And I'm going to pass because I have this Cogwork Wrestler that I can use to like flash in, shrink the scrapwork cohort, block the scrapwork cohort, and kill it. And my cogwork wrestler won't die in the process. Hmm. Okay, they've decided on attackers. I'll flash him in, shrink the cohort, go to blocks, and block. Perfect. Works for me. They can obviously recast it later to make another soldier and have a 3-1 for a turn. It will then go away at the end of the turn. But still, totally worth it. Um, Cogwork Wrestler can't crew the weather light. Oh, they just have a second one. Hmm. That's annoying. Um, but fine, I suppose. Affinity for artifacts. So... Maybe we just play the Weatherlight anyway because of that? Oh no, this makes a tap Power Stone, right? Perfect, we'll do that. Draw two, discard one. Are we going to evolve our Pokemon? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Our uh, Cogwork Wrestler is going to become a... I don't know. A Gear Golem. Sure. Oh. That's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Oh my god. <laughs> it's actually you know it's actually ancient gear golem, but it's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> 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 like what? 
Uh, Erica says, I swear to God, we're literally one step away from having a combat trick called plap, plap, get, get pregnant. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> oh, my God. I mean, yes, I will block. You did it. I drew a land. Yeah, but then Erica, I would just counter that with a morning after pill. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you will not. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, mere Sire costs two. I'll take it and I'll play it. Okay, we're good. What do we got? Next turn, we could play this for three, which would leave us with two more mana, which is not enough to do anything else in our hand, but this does let us draw two cards. So, all right. We've unearthed one of the three ones. That makes another one one. Erica says it's not about the actual act of becoming pregnant. It's more about the energy of the exercise. <laughs> crying, laughing face. <laughs> <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Take it. Go to seven. Oh, that should be the next card. Big dick energy. <laughs> they already had a card that um, was like, I forget. People used to joke that there was a card that was like big something energy. Oh, really? Yeah. I forget what it was, though, unfortunately, because it was pretty funny. Uh, three mana for this. Draw two. One of them will be a land. So I can play something else. Two of them are lands. Cool. Uh, let's static net away there, 4-4. Four, four. My eye is so itchy. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, let's steal your 4-4. Four, four. Create a tap power stone token again. Uh, and no attacks. No need. They got a lot of 1-1s one -ones on their side of the field. A lot of 1-1s. One they can play a 3-1 as well, but we've got stuff for that. Whenever a land enters, they make a food or a treasure. Holy crap. Um, That's very good. Uh, Erica says, one of my go-to flirtatious remarks is, I can't get pregnant, but that doesn't mean we can't try. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I like that. Four, five, five. Okay. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, because Eye of Malkator can just be cast like this, or I could cast Whirler Rogue. <clears throat> Weatherlight can be crewed for three, like with the Mayor Kinsmith. So I'll cast Weatherlight. Leaves me with five mana. Um, I have Malkator would leave me with two. And then I could Hard Evidence as well. Perfect. Marcus says, Rut Row. Timeless Provisioner is very good. Tireless, but yes. Oh, very sorry. Good. You're fine. This card here. It is quite good. Um, I like the art. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Um... Sky Swarmer, Koi, and Stern Lesson. Yeah, I think both of these are good. I think I can go like that, though, um, and put the Stern Lesson first. We can draw it next turn and then draw it into the Sky Swarmer, Koi. Uh, that Tireless Provisioner has all that texture that Marcus was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, I have Malkator becoming a 4-4. Not extremely helpful right now, but uh, it's fine. We can go to Combat, Attackers... An attack with the Thought Monitor, at least. 2-2 two, two Flyer. And... We're on the board! Yay! <laughs> Jesus Christ. My we eyes... did a thing. Still incredibly itchy, though. There's something sort of in it, but not really. I don't know. It's probably an eyelash. 
maybe Ugh. like sticking in it, but it's still like attached. Yeah, so it's like just that. like it's very annoying. I hate it that. Yep. Where you're like trying to get it out, or you're thinking that your tears are getting it out, but yep. it's just still attached and still sticking in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> I will say I was talking about pre-release and saying that I ended up uh, going undefeated. Um, that was in the third of three pre-release events. The other uh, three events, or the other two events that I played, I went two and two each time. Because it turns out, did you know, because I found out the hard way, uh, that uh, printed in this set uh, for... Um, Outlaws uh, Thunder Junction or of Thunder Junction, um, that there is a uh, cruel ultimatum. Hmm. <laughs> because one of my opponents sure did have it in game one and in game two, which was very disappointing. <laughs> I was I was upset. Um, and weirdly, you lose because if you're unfamiliar with cruel ultimatum, three black, two red, two blue. Uh, your opponent sacks a creature, discards three cards, and loses five life. That's bad enough. You, the person who cast it, gets a creature back from your graveyard to your hand, draws three cards, and uh, gains five life. So, uh, no. No thank you. Uh, let's exile this thing. And then two mana left. I guess I just draw a card and play the land that I'm sure I'm going to draw. Or no, I'm not. Sky Swarmer quite right. We already know what our top card is. Perfect. Uh, combat. Pass. Because I forgot to crew the Weatherlight to block with. That's on me. Um, I don't think I'm dead here. Even if they swing out with everything. Because <clears throat> I have three blockers. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. I'm at one on board. Erica says, as someone who was once in the res on the receiving end of three cruel, cruel ultimatums in one game of Limited, I relate. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And it was funny because, like, you know, people were asking me, like, oh, Joe, how'd you do in the last round? And I was like, uh, I lost a cruel ultimatum. And everybody, even people that, like, worked at Champion, uh, if you're unfamiliar, are... are um, our sponsor store that we made lots of videos at this weekend and, and last week in general. But anyway, check him out. Yeah, you should. Oh, okay, now we're done. Uh, anyway, uh, a all the people at the store, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I got cruel ultimatum. They were like, cruel ultimatums in this set. Yep, it, it sure is. It sure is in this set, everybody. Don't worry, it sure is. But yeah, I'm very dead. I don't know why you wouldn't attack with the Tyler's Provisioner. You have the game one. Just do it. Like, I guess I have two mana open, so, ooh, scary. Um, <laughs> let's crew with this guy. Submit. I just don't, like, I just don't have enough blocks for your 75 million creatures on your side of the field. Um, but I'll block like this, like this, and like this. Sure did block the three biggest things and go to exactly zero, if I did my math correctly. Oh, I do go to one. Ah. Because they didn't attack with the Provisioner. If they had, I would have, or if they had, I would be dead right now. Yep. But again, I guess the two mana scared them. Yeah. Which works for me. Return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. It's the Oaken Siren. Okay. Chrome Courier. Like a siren that lives in, in a tree instead of in the ocean? Oaken Siren? It's a, um, it's a, it's the mast of a boat or the, the, the oh, face of the boat. Okay. So it's made of wood. Correct. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, all right. So this will be... I guess I'll play this first. <clears throat> Make a 4-4. Four, four. Get my Mirror Enforcer. Who is free. Mm, what a draw. Okay. Uh, Mirror Enforcer <laughs> enters for free. <clears throat> um... And then Sky Swimmer Koi, I guess, as another 3-3. Three, three. Go to combat. The Eye of Malkator can't do anything else, so I might as well attack for four again. 
Cool, they take it and go to 14. Again, it would do nothing on their turn anyway. I don't have an um, instant speed way of creating um, artifacts. I do next turn. So if I live, that's a good plan. Because hmm. <clears throat> I can create a tap power stone token with this, which would mean my Eye of Malkator would become a 4-4 and be a good blocker. But because I'm now at 4, thanks to uh, my life gain, um, I think I would be okay this turn as well. I, I definitely have a lot of blockers. So... 1-1 one, one Soldier, equip the blade to it. That's fine. Play a land. Okay, so they get their food or treasure. I assume food. Yep. Okay. And then... Passing to attackers. They don't attack. Sick. I'll take my turn. We drew a blue, which you know what? Is extremely helpful. Because then I can cast... Uh, Whirler Rogue and keep up Stern Lesson as well. I could Wander Strike. I guess I need to get rid of the Tireless Provisioner eventually, but I think right now I'm just going to put more bodies on the field to like clog it up because they're top decking and I'm very much not. And I'm about to draw two cards and discard one. So Sky Swarmer Koi, draw then discard. Just shove a rag in there. <laughs> Clog it up. Uh, disenchant. Does that help me? No, it does not. That one can go away. Draw then discard. That can go away as well. Perfect. Dig through the deck. Um, go to... Combat. Attackers. I'm at four. I don't think I'm in a position to attack here. I'm going to say no. I'm at four. They're at 14. So this is their game to lose. And I'm going to uh, hope that they do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, like, if and when they get to a point of swinging out, like I said, I can play Stern Lesson, get a Power Stone token, turn the Eye of Malkator into a 4-4, um, and keep blocking all around. They drew a land, which means they still get their food or treasure. I assume food. Yep. So they're going to, they're basically at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23. Pass two attackers. They don't attack again. Um, I'm going to do this then now. I know that it takes away the Eye of Malkator, but yeah, we discard this. And make a tap power stone token. Make this a 4-4. Draw and then discard again. Sure. Yeah, that one's better than this one. Sure. Good. Good, good, good. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, I will take my turn. Drew hard evidence. Ooh. <laughs> hard shell crab. That's right. Um, all right. I'm my detective pal. I'm tired of you getting uh, benefits off of this thing, so it's going to go away now. I proliferate nothing because I don't have any counters on anything, but that's fine. Uh, I think I'll do this now because I can't cast this. Eye of Malkator becomes a 4-4. Sky Swimmer Koi would allow me to draw and discard. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah, sure. Good. Nice. Good. <laughs> that was a tough choice, but I did it. I'm happy that I did it, and now I can draw a card and get another land. That is fine. This thing will still be here for when I play more artifacts. This makes an artifact, so we'll do that next turn. Um, I'm going to... It's a fluffy. <laughs> they have one flying blocker available to them right now. It's the Oaken Siren. So I think I'm going to crew this with this. And I think I'm going to try to get in with the Weatherlight here. Uh, and the Eye of Malkator. Combat. Attackers. Swing out with those two. I got to try to be a little bit aggressive here. If I sit back, I'm just asking for them to like draw a game-winning card and then there's literally nothing I can do. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to do some things. They can, they can block the Eye of Malkator with like a million things if they want or jump block with their, um, crab. Instead, they just take it all. Go to six and my mythic activates. 
Look at the top five cards in my library, reveal a historic card from among them and put it into my hand, and the rest on the bottom. So I get my best artifact out of my top five cards. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. This yeah. is crazy. They could have won this game like five minutes ago. Yeah, if they had attacked with that 3-2. And now this is like very much turning into your favor. Uh, fingers crossed. It's definitely not perfect yet, but it, it feels okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the yeah. nice thing is, if that uh, card that I get, I get with Noda, uh, oh, so, no, <laughs> uh, it's fine. Um, okay, so they all go on the bottom, uh, and I will end my turn, I guess. Okay, uh, the cool thing is, with Whirler Rogue, I can just tap two artifacts, like my Power Stone tokens or whatever, and some of my stuff is just will be unblockable. Uh, past the end of the turn, they're going to use another food. They're back up to 12. And then they use their third food, I assume. And they're back up to 15. That's fine. I said they were at 23. So we had to bring them down from 23. Uh, they drew. They, they drew. Whoa. That was nuts. Why? They're at 15 again. And they just conceded. So they only have a 1-2 flyer, right? So 4, 5, 6. We'll say that they block 1. So 4, uh, I guess they would block the biggest. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They take 8 damage in the air next turn. And then this is dead because they block the weather light so that we don't get incremental advantage. And they don't take four. So then they would die and two then, turns from now. Right. Because then, yes, then the turn after, if they don't have flying, they take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. And they're already down eight points from fifteen. So, yeah. Erica says that could very easily have been a I don't have enough time for this concession. Absolutely. And again, as I've oh ooh, I had what? I <laughs> I had four cards left in my library. <laughs> I knew it was low. I didn't think it was quite that low, but I knew it was getting pretty freaking low. Because you were doing a lot of drawing and discarding. Oh, that's so funny. But Four left in my library. But when you discard, does it go on the bottom nope. or it goes to the graveyard? No, discard, yeah, to the graveyard, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah and in fact, I, it, because I didn't know that, I probably would have kept going with this Sky Swarmer Koi. Like, if I played this uh, on this coming turn after they conceded, like, I would have um, played this 3-2, made a 1-1 one, one Gnome, drawn a card, discarded a card, I would have drawn a card for the turn, and if I still hadn't noticed, sorry about the sirens, but if I still hadn't noticed... I might have decked out because I really wasn't yeah. paying attention. That's well, like a very real possibility that that could have happened. Yeah, so, and if, if you had chosen to do it one more time, I would have mentioned it to you. Because you knew. But it would have been too late if it was all... No, so I would have drawn for the turn yeah. and then drawn and discarded. So that'd be two down okay. and I would still have two left. Okay, so yeah, I would have mentioned it to you after that. Sure, and because we know that I would have had two... I would have killed them in two turns if they hadn't had anything... Uh, I still would have survived, but only just. <laughs> so, but to be fair, I was at one at one point in this game, so I only just survived twice. So, there you go. Okay, okay. Erica says, "Oh, thank you, boring drafter." You got it. Uh, Erica says, "Also, Amy, I need a blessing with some of your luck from your Y Finance Hus bundle battles." Okay. First of all, holy shit, we got Good three luck. mastery orbs? What do you need luck for? I want to know. I'm passing that energy along to you. <laughs> Hold your hands up. This is getting really awkward. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're... Uh, Ooh. Do we like this guy? What is the crocodile it? elk turtle? I can't freaking see it. Oh, this guy? yes. We do? Uh, he's uh, very ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, no, actually, okay. I don't. Because I have we have three mastery orbs here. So we can use three orbs to get three, um, you know, special card styles. Okay. So this is one of the options. So you don't want this one. That's fine. What about this one? That one's cool. Okay. What about this one? Oh, that one's pretty sick. Okay. 
Uh, what about this one? Nah. And this one? Okay, that one's cool. So we only get three, so be aware, to get this one, we need to get this one, wow. which is two out of the three of our orbs. Ooh. Because uh, I really like the um, the dragon one, because when it does that shifty thing, it really moves. looks like it's flying. Yeah, it sure you know, does. It's yeah, like yeah. changing perspective a little bit as it's swooping down. Yeah, for sure. So that one's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I do like uh, this one a lot, though. Yeah, that one is very pretty. Um, but there's also this one. Meh. And this one. Okay, that one's kind of cool. There's also <laughs> this yeah, one. Yeah, for, for this, I, <laughs> I like the action shots because it does the movie thing. Sure. The moving thing, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's like, <clears throat> it, it should be an art that lends itself to that. Okay. So this isn't really one of them. Okay. Uh, and then if we get that one, we could get this one, the Vein Ripper. Nah. All right. So you want then this one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. And then I don't know if it will be possible, um, but if we get this one, then we're that much closer to this if we get another one. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess. Either that or we get, th- or we can, or we we get can do these those two, two and this. One. And then try for this one later. Yeah, that's what I'd prefer. You got it. Pick number one, confirmed. Connecting the dots. Card style. Pick number two, confirmed. Incinerator of the Guilty. Mm. Gotten. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that name, too. Oh my god, it's so awesome. Uh, and pick number three, Proft's Eidetic Memory. Confirmed. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, very good. Erica says, Wednesday is the day the character I've been saving for in uh, Honkai Star Rail comes out and I'm. and I'm going to be summoning for him. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like a loot box situation. So uh, Amy will know this from my Marvel Strike Force game. Every time I ask you to push the button and it like explodes oh, yeah, and the three yeah, things yeah. come down okay. and I like hope for something good, I use Amy's luck for that too all the time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So instead of using it for Mar- Marvel Strike Force, that's right. I'll use it for your game, Erica. That's right. I'm actually going to ditch a land here. I'm sh- I imagine I will draw another land by turn four and we will see if uh, I am proven right or not. Blood Fountain, huh? Okay. Blood Token. Thought Monitor. Oh, shit. That's a very good card. I guess I'm going to use my Glint Sleeve Artisan to make a Servo, then, to make this cheaper. Surgical Skull Bomb. Uh, They can sack it to draw a card, or sack it to bounce one of my creatures, or any creature, and draw a card. I did draw the land, by the way. So that's perfect. Uh, And I think... What does this say? Sack Blood Fountain. Return up to two creatures from your graveyard to your hand. Look at their sleeves. I know, I was going to say, I really love these sleeves, but also, I love these sleeves on this field, because it's that big golden box sure. that it's like sitting upon, and it just really makes it stand out so much. Sure. It's very pretty. <laughs> Ooh, that's an interesting one. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Well, I don't know how many clues you're going to be making, but you ain't milling me. That's not happening. Because we just played that last game, and I know how that goes. So, <laughs> no thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a servo. And then next turn, I can make uh, two thopters. So that'll be uh, that'll make this cost uh, three. Erica says, I'm very close to the guaranteed five star, which has a 50-50 shot. To be him or someone else. Nice. But I'm a big enough simp that I have <laughs> enough saved to get him even if I lose the 50-50. LOL. <laughs> well, I hope you get him so you don't have to, um, you know. Use all those use resources. It. Yeah. F- correct. Uh, they countered my world rogue. No. Tamio's journal. Blink Moth Nexus. Okay, I can play Thought Monitor. That's cool. Combat. Uh, attackers attack for three. 
They take it. They don't have any mana open, so... Thought Monitor, I'll draw two cards. Perfect, I played a land this turn. Ah, see? So with Tamiyo's Journal, every turn they investigate. So if I had not destroyed this, every time they sacked a clue, we would mill three cards. Wow. Ah, I-5-6. Thank God we have this static net, huh? Whew, scary. Okay, another land. Uh, let's play this. We'll play the Exemplar. And we'll play the Static Net. Uh, she says your opponent is playing Popper over there, LMAO. <laughs> All commons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got they got Tamio's journal, but yeah. What was this? This was an uncommon. Yeah, I mean, it felt like a little stronger. Um, but yeah, this works for me. They were uh, hoping to distract us with the beautiful sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have one card in hand, too. Wow. They were like, they won't notice how bad my deck is <laughs> if my sleeves are pretty. <laughs> They're going to sack a blood token. Oh, no, they sacked the clue. Excuse me, to draw a card. My bad. Uh, sure, that was the end of my turn. They're at nine. They now sack a blood to discard a swamp and draw. Okay. Investigate again. Because it's every turn. Mirror Kinsmith would let me go get Mirror Enforcer, which would cost one, two, three, four less. So it would only cost three. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, or three. I could cast it next turn. A four, five death touch on the ground means that I will take my turn. Drew, hard evidence. That's an interesting one. Let's do that first. Draw another card. Um, because I can still play the Mere Kinsmith. I won't be able to play the Enforcer, but okay. And I drew a land. That's fine. So let's... Not with Blink Moth Nexus. What the hell? Um, oh, because I would have to, right? Mm, they're at 9. 8, 7, 6. So, okay. So I want to do this. <clears throat> let's make the Blink Moth into a 1-1 one, one flyer. Uh, Erica says, I was mostly talking about the Gear Seeker Serpent. When Kaladesh came out, that card ran wild over Popper. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, it's really good. Where did, oh, I exiled it. Of course I did. It was very scary. <laughs> um, oh, I remember that art. Yeah. Because it was fucking sick. Yeah. But yeah, it costs one less for each artifact you control. So if you're playing an artifact deck, you could play this for like two blue, you know, like kind of early on. And then for six mana late game, it just can't be blocked. And so you just hit them for five multiple times and you kill them. They really are thinking hard about this Blink Moth Nexus activation. <laughs> it's a 1-1 it's a one, one flyer. <laughs> They've got Oogie Boogie. Yeah, the Scream Puff. He's the Oogie Boogie man. <laughs> That's right. Oh, the other uh, the other game I played the, uh, this weekend where uh, we I had won game one. It was best of three again, obviously. I won game one. Game two uh, went to time. And so for people who are unfamiliar with how going to time works, you get five turns. Uh, and it was turn four, which was my opponent's last possible turn. And then I would be turn five. All I had to do was live. I was at five. Uh, and they exactly killed me with a skull crack. Combined with um, the two creatures where whenever you commit a crime, it drains them. It drains, and they had two of those. I'll go to combat. Uh, go to attackers. And I'll attack for three in the air. Okay. Two turn clock. Pass. Pass. Uh, investigate. Actually, notably, if they don't play another blocker, they have to, right? The 
fleeting memories again. I have 25 cards left in my library. I feel okay. They got two of these, though. So they could sack three clues. I would mill nine cards, but I have 25 in my library, so I would go to 16 cards in my library. Draw for my turn, that's 15. So I'm not uh, too concerned with that. And they play the land. See, that's why you keep the hand land, y'all. I would have looked at that and been like, what else do they have? And now it doesn't matter. Because they didn't keep the hand land. That's why it's a patented geek for all hand land. Yeah. Oh, what a draw. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Hell yes. Okay. Um, well. Let's activate Blink Moth Nexus again. Let's go to combat. Um, Wait, that card doesn't blink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let me see how this works. Combat. Swing with everyone. And I think I just win now. If my math is correct. What does Tamiyo's journal do? I mean, you can sack... Oh, sack three clues. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Okay, so I mill nine. We knew this. Resolves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You got it. They got two of my exile spells, though. That's interesting. Um, they have to have something for five mana that will save them from dying. Five mana or less, of course. Go to blocks. They destroy static net to get back their 5-6. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. They go to Sorry. 2, I think, here then? Yeah, they go to 2. You got it. Well done, opponent. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Uh, and then I will play my Mythic, Weatherlight. Uh, I guess I play the... Mm, keep the Handland. Never know when I'll need it. And my turn. They investigate. I have 15 cards in my library, notably. They can sack this to bounce something. Return a creature to its owner's hand only as a sorcery. So they get rid of my 03. I don't care. I'm not blocking. I'm at 22. And you're at 2. Like, I'm not concerned. Uh, but it drew them a card. Is that why? Yeah, it drew them a card. That's, that's the reason they did it, and it gets them incremental advantage. But yes, I have a flyer on the field uh, that is lethal, so they can attack me without much concern. They bring me to 18, and they make a food. That's why. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, whenever you investigate for the first time each turn, investigate an additional time. What a combo! Holy shit! That's very good. I take my turn. Mirror Enforcer was drawn? Okay, well, I was gonna do it anyway, but... Well, let's play Mirror Kinsmith. I was literally gonna search for the Mirror Enforcer with the Mirror Kinsmith, but now I don't have to. I can instead search for the Mirror Sire, which then when I play it for two... Then lets me play the Mirror Enforcer for free. Ah. Yeah. Uh, and then I will crew the Weatherlight with my Mirror Kinsmith. Go to combat. Ah, oh, I messed it up, didn't I? Can I still do this? I can. Okay, good. Whew. I missed. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Mm -hmm. I messed it up a little. But uh, go to combat. Four, five, six, seven. They block four and die. Oh, they have food. They have food. Block there. That makes sense. You would die unless you sack your food. Okay. So they go to five. Then take three and go down to two. Um... And I end my turn. They investigate twice. Oh no, the creature died. They investigate once. You got it. I have 13 cards left in my library. They can sack two clues, mill me for six. 
I will have seven cards left. If they can make two more clues, then I can then next turn will be my last turn. But <clears throat> it's fine. I've got to get aggressive here regardless. Um, but they're at two, so it's not really going to be that difficult. Um, yeah. And even if they have a way to destroy Weatherlight, I feel like... I mean, they have two cards in their hand, right? So pass to attackers. This one's a nail-biter. Yeah, it really is. A four, five. Oh, it makes them a food if it hits us, right? Okay. So pass to blockers and block with my little servo friend here. It doesn't have trample, so I don't care. No food for you. Um, they sack a clue, draw a card, mill me for three. So I'm down to ten cards in my library. One, two, three. They draw a card. They have three, four, five, six mana open right now. Whew. I don't understand why they haven't used their blood fountain to get more creatures back. Like, because they can only do it as a sorcery, right? So they could use their blood fountain. Okay, so minstrosity, when it dies, make a food. Okay. But then if they don't have a way to sack it, I'm not killing it. Like, I'm, I'll just attack you with just flyers. They sack a clue and draw a card, mill me for three. I go down to seven cards in my library. Resolves, one, two, three. Okay. They draw another card. They have three mana left. So now they can't use the Blood Fountain anymore unless they didn't play a land this turn. They conceded. Wow. Thank you, Gen X. There had to have been a line there where they could have used that Blood Fountain. So the Blood Fountain, for four mana, uh, four mana tap, sack it, return up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. So they had this flyer, which would at least be a blocker to stall for long enough to try to mill me out because with i guess with this on the field it would have died like there had to be a way this is the this is only as a sorcery no it's not so they could have done this at the end of the turn where this died right okay oh uh, but they wouldn't have been able to i don't think this ever would have been on the field for an upkeep so every upkeep they make a uh they investigate they make a clue if this was on the field, they would have been able to make two clues. And so on my last turn, I would have drawn a card. Then they could have milled me for six and put me to exactly zero cards in my library, which still would have given me my last turn. Um, and so I guess I would have just been able to kill them with Thought Monitor plus Blink Moth Nexus. They were trying to find a way to make more food, which is why I blocked this and why this wasn't going to die. Because, um, yeah, if I, like... If there had been a way that I would have attacked with like this, they could have blocked here, made a food, sacked the food. It wouldn't have been able to be done in the same turn that I killed them, but still. There were there were some lines. Maybe they just like just missed it, but I'm I'm pretty grateful. That was a great game. Wow. Wow. Like indeed. I said, nail biter. Yeah, very much so. Holy crap. Okay. Well, we're hanging on by the skin of our teeth still, so uh let's keep going. These apples have teeth. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they look like skulls. <laughs> we saw that card. We could have taken that card, but I chose not to. Plus, I believe it was a black card, and we're not in that color. So Yeah. It's fine. Um, yeah, obviously, it's 941. Even if this draft goes long, we can still practice some Ginny Fay if people are around and still interested in doing so. Uh, Amy has to be up kind of early tomorrow, so if you have to sneak out, I completely understand. I may have to, yeah. yeah. I get you. Amy's doing important jobby things tomorrow. Yes, well. <laughs> um, this is a weird hand, but I'll take it. All right, I'll play this and pass, because I can always flash this in and, like, shrink something if I need to. So I don't really need to this time, but still. They can reveal an artifact and put it into their hand and the rest of the bottom. They reveal. Retrofitter Foundry. Three to untap it, two to make a servo, one to sack a servo and make a thopter. Sack a thopter, make a 4-4. Four, four. Jesus. 
<laughs> that does a lot of things, mm. is what we've learned here today. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, suck it. <laughs> Go, Cogra <Congress> Wrestler. <laughs> okay. All right. As soon as they play that foundry, I'm getting rid of it with this disenchant. They create a tap power stone. Okay. Uh, I guess I let that go. Put a plus one plus one counter on it once each turn. It's a two two now. Okay. Uh, take my turn. Drew mirror enforcer. Okay. Well, speaking of tap power stones, let's draw two. Discard one. Okay. I'll discard a land. I guess. That makes sense. No attacks, and just wait. Um, next turn I could do like fourth land Koi maybe. Um, Briar Bridge Patrol and the Retrofitter Foundry. Okay, three 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 two and a three three. Uh oh, we might have found the losing game, everybody. We might have found it. Um. Uh, tapped Power Stone won't help me here, except that I can make a 4-4, but if they make an artifact, which they can definitely do, um, this makes a tap Power Stone again, 3, 4, 5, I guess I'll hope to draw a land. I did draw. I drew two lands, but they're neither of them are basics, huh? Um, awkward. Yikes. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and not attack and just wait, I guess, even more. Oh, it's annoying. Okay. I mean, the if we play the bridge next turn, that's another land. This will cost three. Oh, okay. I was going to chump anyway, but uh, I guess uh, that works, because their deck's very good. One more power? Can you kill me? I don't think so. I need to step away for a sec. Okay. Good luck. So the sack death draw a card. We take 11 and go to 1. Uh, and I don't believe there's a card in our deck that saves us. Disenchant is not the 1. No. Um, because we could do Citizen's Arrest, that could sort of one thing. We have both Disenchants. If we play Blink Moth Nexus, um, the Mirror Enforcer could be cast with these at least. So if we play this, then it only costs two land, which means we could still disenchant something. But like, it's definitely not enough. Um, so yeah, they've got this game. Go Thanos, all you need is a full set of Power Stones. I have to bio, but then I'm free. No worries, Erica. Yeah, this game's very over. So, very, very over. Go ahead, tap your shit. I don't... It's fine. It's not... I don't have much going on anyway. So, make another servo. She gets a counter. I mean, the game was over a long time ago. Steeper for, like, a very long time ago. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, Woodland Champion. And game. Negative 11. Thank you, Steeper 4. And that's the end. So as Erica said, um, we can test out our stuff. I'll open a pack or two. I think we have a couple uh, while we wait for Erica to be ready. Um, but we went three and three, which means that we get a thousand gems, which is not bad. And we get two packs, Zendikar Rising and Midnight Hunt. Okay. I mean, I mentioned I would open some packs. We have five to open right now. So let's do two Murders at Karlov Manor to uh, see the set off with. Basically, uh, obviously we didn't play it tonight, but still. Nice. Thank you, Lord Sephiroth. Appreciate it. Uh, no new out of these. Two rares. One is a rare wild card. Glad that wasn't our last one, though. We get a shadowy backstreet. Not bad. Backstreet's back, all right. And then we have Wilds of Eldraine. We'll move backwards, I guess. We got a mythic. Hell yeah. First of all, we got from the bonus sheet, Utopia Sprawl. Uh, and our mythic is a... <laughs> Knew that was coming. Our Mythic Rare Wild Card. God damn it. That's fine. We get a rare out of Midnight Hunt. No firsts here either. 
We get a pithing needle. Ugh, that art. So gross. Well done. And a Zendikar Rising with good old Nissa on it. And our rare in this one. No firsts here either. Is that a double rare? Or is uh, it's a rare and it's alchemy version, I bet. It sure is. It's Master of Winds. <laughs> okay, so the what's the difference? Um, when it enters, draw two, discard one. And it's a four mana, one four flyer. Whenever you cast an instant, sorcery, or wizard spell, you may have its base power and toughness become 4-1 or 1-4. And then it says, this is a 4-mana 1-5, so it's fixed for alchemy. And uh, whenever you cast an instant, sorcery, or wizard, it becomes a 5-1 or a 1-5. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, they, I guess, felt that this rare was not powerful enough, uh, and so they changed its toughness up by one point, and then obviously then switched its ability to make it, you know... That, that five is the number instead of four, essentially. Okay, cool. Uh, that's all our packs for now. Obviously, as I said, don't forget, um, we're not done. But don't forget, next week, we'll be back for the first time playing Outlaws of Thunder Junction on stream. Um, I did get to play it pre-release. Like I said, I, I really like the mounts deck. Uh, I think it was really good. Um, I also was lucky enough to open... I'm rushing back to the PC. Sorry to make you wait. You did not make me wait at all. Uh, I was doing stuff, so no worries whatsoever. Um, I uh, was able to open Gisa, which is a mythic, and Foil Tiny Bones, which is also a mythic, in the same kit. I definitely played them together because Gisa says that skeletons and zombies that you control get plus one, plus one, and have menace, and Tiny Bones is a skeleton with death touch, uh, and it's a 1-1, one, one. so it became a 2-2 two, two Menace Death Touch if they were out on the field at the same time. Uh, and Tiny Bones said if it hit your opponent, you could take a card out of their graveyard and cast it that turn. Um, and it's you could cast uh, pay mana as if it were mana of any color to cast uh, permanence only from their graveyard. Um, and so uh, I never got to live that dream because that was the event where I got Cruel Ultimatum twice. Um, I did have Gisa and Tiny Bones like in my hand at the same time, but literally the turn before I was going to cast Gisa, uh, my opponent purely out of luck and or the fact that it's a mythic, uh, killed Tiny Bones. So never had them on the field at the same time. Uh, Gisa, by the way, an absolutely incredible bomb ass of a card. Erica, please feel free to challenge us whenever you are ready. And thank you for being back. Um, but uh, Gisa is incredible. Three and two black for a 4-4. Four, four. And she says, whenever you commit a crime, make two 2-2 uh, two, two skeletons. They enter tapped, but she gives them each plus one plus one and menace. So you just make two 3-3 three, three menaces. And she has ward of two generic and pay two life. Lord Sephiroth, uh, we are, just because we're running up against it, we were going to test our uh, new Brawl deck kind of once, maybe twice. Um, we can do challenges if folks are interested. It's just that probably tonight's not the night. Um, but remind me on a future stream, I have no issues doing that whatsoever. Um, but we're going to test this Ginny Fey deck that we made two weeks ago now, I think. Um We've got some changes to make to it because it didn't do great for us last week. Um, but we'll see what needs to be done. It's cool. I just have decks in every format. Okay. That's great. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely keeping this. Don't get me wrong. The interesting thing, though, is if I want to... Um, well, why would I do that? Um, do this. Let it enter tapped. Yeah, if I want to do this on curve, um, I would need to not be able to play red which kind of sucks but it's fine i'm gonna do arcane signet yeah so that's fine it works that way my bad never mind so i can play this as red because this can tap for green she said nice uh, thanks oh <laughs> beautiful uh three damage to each okay so we want to uh play this as red and play this perfect um, okay. 
So I guess we can do this next turn. Makes sense to me. So yeah, like I said, Lord Sephiroth, especially if we get to like figure out what we need to do with this deck and fix it up a little bit, I would I would be happy to play you in the future. Not a problem at all. Scry two on Charming Prince. One on top, one on bottom. Okay, fantastic. Dawn of Hope. Whenever she gains life, she can pay two to draw a card and can pay four to make a 1-1 one -one soldier with life link. Okay, uh, let's... Let's Essica's Chariot. Make two cats. Make... Jesus Christ. Okay. Make two 4-4 four, four cats. That's gross. <laughs> uh, that's really gross. Tribute to the World Tree is a gross card. Just disgusting. Okay. Karn. Good card. Okay. Top two. One... Uh, goes into their hand uh, and sort of body and mind, Jesus, can go into exile with a silver counter on it. <whistles> Scary. <laughs> Pass to attackers. Her getting that sword is like very scary, so I think what I'm going to do is Uh, I guess I do this because the other one's better so I'll do this now um, and kill Charming Prince so that then I can go to combat attackers and swing out and kill Karn because I really don't want her to get that sword that sword's pretty good <laughs> pretty good Okay. Woo! The other Elish Norn, A. Eh? Okay, well, that's scary. Um, I guess I could do this. Yeah, let's do that. Sack this. Search for... A white and a green. Beautiful. Uh, and then, I mean, I guess cold steel heart for white. Welcome back, Amy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about that. How could you? Um, okay. I think we're good. We're facing this person named Espion Sun. Oh, I hear they're a loser. <laughs> I <laughs> vehemently disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I love Erica. Don't we all? Yes. <laughs> and if we don't, we should. Ooh, it's Elish Norn. We're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Norn the second. Yeah, exactly. There's so many Elish Norns. Um, <sighs> no blocks. Yikers. Down to 19. <sighs> Where's my removal? Um, this isn't it. I mean, let's, uh, let's try this. I think this works, right? The way that I want it to. Um, oh, but I may have to do this first, which I don't think I can, right? So let's do this. Ah, oh, the abilities don't happen. No. That's fine. At least the... Oh, I don't have the... Okay. I have a single mana, not double. <sighs> Damn. Um, 
Well, ain't nothing I can do about any of this. I think I'm just dead. I, I just can't draw removal. I don't have enough. Um... Foretelling a card. Could be some angels happening soon. That's my guess. Pass two attackers. Take a million. Pass two blockers. What's this crew? Four? Damn it. Um, nope, no blocks. Take ten. Go to nine. Take my turn. I mean, I drew a land. That's something. Um, I can at least play the Pollen Shield Hair, which will live thanks to Tristani Discordant. There were no Enter the Battlefield effects, so that's fine. Um, and I guess I play Ginny? That makes sense. I don't know. I mean, she is pretty awesome. Right? Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, pass, I guess? So, the cool thing is, she kind of can't attack with two 1-1 one, one humans. If at least three white men have spent, gain one life for each creature you control. Okay. Whenever you gain life, you can pay two to draw a card. Nice, nice. Very good. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. Um, basically, the nice thing here is she can't profitably attack with Elish Norn anymore. Uh, the, the middle one, her her actual commander, uh, Grand Cenobite. Because I can just double block with my tokens. One token will die, the other one will not. And then all of my creatures have all their power back again. Um, so that would be pretty tough, I think. Um, the 6-9 can still attack, I suppose. Uh, although, I guess I could triple block that. But this does say, what, sack... How do you flip this thing? Is this not the flip one? Oh. I thought this was the flip one for some reason. Okay. Never mind. No, Joe, this is the 69 one. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, guess what? I was right. Angels are happening. That is my favorite card from Kaldheim. Which arguably 69 is its own flip, right? So. Yeah, it's that joke of like, uh, what's the speed limit of sex? 68, because it's 69, you gotta turn around. <laughs> <laughs> I had never heard that one. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this lets me draw a card, right? Right. It doesn't. It. That Elish Norn literally just shuts off most of my cards. And there's nothing I can do about it because I cannot draw any piece of removal that isn't deal three damage, which does actual nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Do I have to read any of this? I read all of it. Okay. So, you're good. Oh, look, Heliod. I think this Espeon Sun person has an awfully good deck. Yeah, I've heard that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, we're at nine? Okay, well. Yeah, I guess we lose. Um, <laughs> uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can finally stop this thing, maybe. Uh, four, five, six, seven. So we can finally stop this thing. And then stop one of these. Good game. <laughs> she goes to 35. Oh, she totally needs that. And we had zero chance this game. Mm. Zero. I feel like this deck is bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're at negative 12. <laughs> Thank you, Espeon Sun. Ah. <sighs> Well, <laughs> we sure did test the deck. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
I just got lucky with uh, Torpor Nun. Norn. I mean, that was very good uh, for you. <laughs> that was a very good game, Erica. Very, very nice. Uh, we just I I don't I don't remember what kind of spot removal we have in that deck, but I sure didn't see any. <laughs> so there was like I don't know. I feel like next we've time we'll get... get some stain stick or something <laughs> for that spot removal. Nice, very nice. <laughs> uh, she says we can do one more if you want. Yeah, let's let's give it a try. Let's see. Uh, make sure it wasn't a fluke on either side, right? That that maybe our deck can draw better than that, and or. Like you said, maybe you don't get that one Elish Norm, but like I, I don't, I don't see you having done poorly in that game at all, or like gotten lucky or anything like that. I think that's what your deck was trying to do, and did so very well. Like I, I don't want my strategy. <laughs> Marcus. Marcus has no removal. How dare! <laughs> exactly, and that's why I, I didn't draw any. So I have to, I have to look. Uh, and see if we need more, or like I said, if it was just a, a fluke and just pure bad luck. Because, I mean, I look, I have perfect luck when I play Magic. It's like never a concern. Right, because you've got that flood insurance. Yeah, I was going to say, I draw I draw the, the correct number of lands that I need every time. Right. No more, no less. Every game. <laughs> I, hey, I have paid up Erica on our flood insurance, so we should be good. <laughs> I definitely have not. <laughs> we don't have money for that. Let's I know, be we real. don't. Well, flood insurance is very expensive nowadays, so you're absolutely right. Um, he says, this isn't a 40-card draft deck. That's a horrible keep. Is it really? Damn it. Uh, this goes tapped. I think it's great. There are lots of red cards and green cards, and those are the best, and the rest of them can go away. <laughs> Marcus says, what's your ramp? Where? Oh, where's your ramp? Yeah, I mean, thankfully, I, I top-decked this, right? So it was pure luck at that point, but uh, search for two on the battlefield. Tapped. So I need a red for sure, and then I have double white, so I need a white. So I feel like the ramp's probably right next to the stairs, if I had to guess. <laughs> All right, so we can do things. We can do things. We got things. Yeah. Flesh Taker. Whenever she sacks another creature, she gains a life and scries one. And then she can sack another creature for one mana to give it plus two plus two until end of turn. Um, she likes taking that flesh. Jesus. Uh, and this is whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one, you gain one. Nice. Vegetable Peeler again. Correct. The vegetable Peeler Sword Guy. <laughs> um, hmm. He's a 5-4? Sure. Come on, Jetmere. Let's do it. Because you play Jetmere first, and then Jetmere's second. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah. You, you definitely know. don't have your second come out first to, like, draw all the ire and the removal. You <laughs> definitely just walk right out there as the boss man and, you know, yep. not be concerned whatsoever <laughs> about yep. anything. Definitely. <laughs> because when your second comes out, she's got cats and dogs. <laughs> that's right. And that's Whoa. gonna save your ass. Elenda the Dusk Rose. Yeah. Um all right, we don't need red that badly. I'll play another white. Um Guess we play Ginny. She is the second. That's right. Then we play the Charming Scoundrel. Mm. Uh, which will... She does look charming. Right? Uh, and I'll make a treasure, which of course is instead a 2-2 two -two haste cat. Oh, I see. That does make sense. 
Marcus says you should intervention her ramp. Yeah. Uh, and this. Attack for five vigilance. Yeah, he's right. Because uh, she's uh, low on land right now. She's only got three mana open. Ah. But these tap for mana. Yeah. So I can get rid of them uh, and make sure that, you know, it's harder for her to cast things. Yeah. She goes to 20. All that flood insurance made her dry up over there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so I'll do that. Um, plus, getting rid of the banner is helpful, too. And this is a 4-4. Four, four, if one or more tokens would be created, twice that many are created instead. And one and two white or pay four life. Sack two other artifacts and or creatures to put an indestructible counter on it. Okay. Well, uh, we want to get rid of two things, which is X equals two. One, two. Auto pay. We only have two mana left. Um, She's so mad at you right now. I would be. Uh, and then... She did play a 4-4, so I'm going to say uh, no attacks. I know that she probably wants it, um, but she'd have to sack two other artifacts and or creatures. What does Elenda do again? 1-1 one, one lifelink. Whenever another creature dies, put a counter on her. When she dies, make X-1-1 one, one vampires with lifelink where X is her power. I remember playing in an event with this card, and I had gotten her up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. You gain a lot of life when you have, when you have that uh, 7 7 lifelinker. We drew Voldaren Epicure, that when it enters, it deals 1 damage to each opponent and make a blood. So um, I will play Primal Vigor. And Voldaren Epicure. And then I guess I make uh, another dog friend. Yeah. Uh, attack here. It's a 4 2. So Jetmere, now that I have a million creatures, right? Uh, creatures we control get plus one plus zero and vigilance as long as we have three or more creatures, which we very much do. Creatures we control get plus one plus zero and have trample as long as we have six or more creatures, which we do. And all our creatures also get plus one plus zero and have double strike if we have nine or more creatures, which we currently oh. do not. Okay. We got to kill one of her creatures. She gets counters and drains and stuff. See, Alenda's a 5-5 five five already. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's Teza, the commander. We drew Adeline. Okay. Um. God, that... Stained glass Vivian, so freaking gorgeous. It really is, yeah. Mm. It's gotta be out of line. Then we go to combat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's gonna make two tokens, and we're gonna have nine creatures now. So we've attacked. Uh, dog. We have four six six double striking trample <laughs> dogs attacking. Amazing. Six six one. I think I said six six. Six one. But still, that's really gross. It's a pack of dogs. Yeah. Uh, Marcus says Vivian gets creatures. If you don't hit a creature, take a land. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. How does this go? Oh, God, it's... Oh. The sound effects. Yeah. Oh, my God, Elenda. 
uh, resolve them all. I'm not, I'm not sitting there <laughs> clicking through each one of those. So many uh, creatures. That's a lot of life. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Espianza. Oh, we did it at... Uh, it was a best of three, I guess. Uh. <laughs> I, I said... Oh, whoa, Arena. Oh, it's are, like we, are we okay? Out. Are we good? What's happening? <laughs> oh, shite. Oh, shit, I accidentally best of three to LOL. No worries, I can just, uh, <laughs> like, turn it off or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like it's freaking fine. out. <laughs> yeah, no worries. We'll just, we'll just chill on this screen. Not a problem at all. <laughs> we can look at the deck this way and just, you know. <sighs> okay. Okay. By two life. By yeah, yeah, it was uh, that was very scary. Yeah. <laughs> when you ever went back up, I was like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have somebody new here in chat, Mang or Mong, uh, saying you all excited for Outlaws of Thunder Junction tomorrow. Absolutely we are. The The set does come out on Arena tomorrow, uh, and I, I don't know. I'll probably be able to play it during the week. Obviously, we won't be back for another stream until next Monday, Magic Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, as we always are. Um, but I did get, I was saying earlier, I did get to play in a pre-release. So, um, so yeah. It, uh, or sorry, I said a pre-release. Three pre-releases. Right. It was a lot of fun. The, the set is cool and interesting. Marcus says, Joe, you were saying? It's a good point. He's right. <laughs> like I said, I had to I had to double check. Erica was absolutely right as well to say let's play again because right. you know one game does not equal the ability of the deck. All right, and she says, did you notice the twenty vampires? Oh, well. I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. They all had life link because um, what's her name? Elenda got huge, and then died into all those vampires. Uh, see, Holland says, Mang the Merciless. Apologies, lol. Yeah. Is, is, that a, is that a property of some kind? A, a character from some kind of... Yes, I don't remember from what. It's like, it's like it is... So... So is it Mang or is it Mong? Can you guys just say first or second? <sighs> More like, what up, <laughs> What up, Mang? Mang. Like Mang? Yeah. Like Man. Mang. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, Mang? Which is great. I okay. like that. Okay, cute. I like that a lot. Cute. Very good. Very good. So, uh, I don't know. Did we... Marcus, what were we thinking? Do we Are we changing things tonight? Were we just getting a feel for it and we'll work on it next week or the week after or whatever? Oh, God. Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. I was like, oh. come on, Amy. That's a you thing. I did not remember his name. <laughs> I do like that movie quite a bit, though. I'll view the battlefield, return to the sideboard. Okay, yeah, I can turn this off later. That is totally fine. It's, it's not like we're doing anything else. We're done, so. <laughs> <laughs> no worries whatsoever. Yeah, I'm bad at remembering names, C. Holland, but. <laughs> Amy loves Flash Gordon. I really do. <laughs> uh, Marcus says, we need to see more games to know for sure. Better keep. Keeps. Uh, better keeps will yield more accurate results. Fair point. Fair point. Well, a fine, Marcus. God. <laughs> All right. So fair enough. So we'll try that over the coming weeks. Uh, obviously, next week, as uh, as Meng here reminded us, we will be um, back with Outlaws of Thunder Junction next week, which will be cool. If we've got time at the end, you know, like if we like finish a draft and there's like 10, 20 minutes left. We, we can always go back to one of these games, not a not a big deal at all, sure. uh, and try to um, check out the deck and see how how well it continues to work um, and kind of do enough testing to see like what the highs and lows are for it basically yeah. um, so that's great uh, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight's stream as another reminder 
because pre-release is over. First of all, if you missed any of the four videos that we put out around the release or pre-release of uh, Outlaws at Thunder Junction, you should check it out on the channel. We have two videos of me opening a ton of product. Like a lot. A lot. Like over $4,000 of retail product was opened on this channel. Uh, C. Holland says, thanks for the stream. Stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're very welcome, C. Holland. Pleasure to have you as always. Yes, always. Uh, Meng says, LOL, y'all are great. Finally got around to hitting the record button myself. Going to watch those videos now. Awesome, Meng. Thank you so much. Very cool. I, I hope you enjoy. They're, they're a hell of a thing. The, um, the Play Booster boxes opening is three and a half hours long, so be aware of that. You know, yeah. get yourself a snack, sit down, relax, get comfortable. Put it um, on like 1.5 times speed, and, uh, you know, yeah. The um, It's an investment. The collector booster cases opening, because I opened two cases of play boosters, two cases, cases of collector boosters, um, and yeah, the videos were awesome. I really enjoyed making them as I always do, so shout outs to Champion as is always appropriate for having me for that uh, and then at like on friday i opened four pre-release kits on camera as well um i felt like pull rates were down folks can let me know what they thought maybe i was just like not aware of the power level of some of the cards or the value of some of the cards um but it, for pre-release kits for play boosters i guess i felt like some of the pull rates were down at least in the kits that i opened maybe i just got unlucky but people can go check out that video and let me know what you think. Maybe, like I said, right. maybe I'm uh, misinterpreting or misunderstanding. Yeah, leave it in the comments, like what you experienced when you opened them, or even like what you've heard other people say if maybe you didn't get to a pre-release yourself. Sure. And then, uh, as I said, I'm going to do my best. I'm almost certain I should be able to do it, but I'm going to do my best to have one more pre-release kit opening out this Thursday. This should have another one next week and another one the week after. So I'll have three more coming. Um, so stay tuned for those as well. And those will be individual kits. So the video should be shorter, right? Cause the Friday video was an hour long. Um, this should be, they're typically around 20 minutes or so. Um, so you'll hope, like I said, hopefully you'll see that one on Thursday. And then as a reminder, Friday, we are back live again, right here on geek for all, yes. uh, at 8 PM Eastern, as we always are when we are live. Uh, and we will be continuing our playthrough of God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. So non-magic content, be aware of that. But that's because we have other channels, if you're unaware. Links down in the description box below for our other two channels, Video Games for All. And Gluten Free for All. But also linked down below are links to our socials. And especially, you should check out Gluten Free for All's Instagram, because that's where Amy is posting content at this point. I've got... I've got new new people checking it out literally every day. Yep. It's like so cool. Yeah. And actually a decent number of them are um, actual gluten-free travel bloggers or um, restaurants. I was going to say or chefs, right? Chefs. Like, like yeah. it's, I mean, it's, um, it's really an honor. It's validating. Yeah. She deserves it. <laughs> Thank um, you. You're welcome. Keep up the great work. Uh, and so, yeah. Especially after, like, years ago when I used to work at a restaurant and my boss said to me, um, I don't think you should do this for a living. Uh, and I was like, okay, but this is, like, kind of important to me. And she's like... I think you should be an actor. And I was like, an actor? So, here we are. <laughs> I'm not an actor. <laughs> no. But, but isn't that great that two people in the fields that we each work in have both said that to us? Yeah. That we shouldn't be in our profession. It's great. <laughs> oh, they've said that to me about real estate as well. So. That's fair. But they're very <laughs> wrong on that. Whereas she might have been somewhat right about you working in a restaurant. Yeah, like, yeah, I hated it. Exactly, I hated it. exactly. <laughs> but anyway, and I was terrible at it. Yeah, but I did it. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, you put your effort into it. You put one hundred and ten percent of your effort into it for as long as you were there doing it, and then you weren't anymore. That's all. Right. I just wanted to be able to 
create a good community for people who are gluten free, you know, a good place for them to come. Because back then, gluten free restaurants weren't a thing. Yeah. Not in America, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had to get our shit together. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, Amy, speaking of tonight's stream, and uh, we, in fact, had some amazing folks here with us tonight. Not just our good friend Espion's son over here. Yes. <laughs> And not Even though just, she is the goodest of friends. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and not just our good friend Marcus, who helped us make this deck a reality. The other goodest of friends. <laughs> but, Amy, you have some work to do. Yes. So, um, Mang, thank you so much for being here for the first time. Uh, leave your pronouns in chat for me real quick. I always ask that every time somebody's new, so please just leave your pronouns for me. Hopefully I'll remember the next time I see you, but if I don't, I'll ask again. And hopefully you enjoy those videos if you get to go check them out. It was, yeah. it was truly a blast to make. Uh, it took many, many hours to make them, but it was 110% worth it. So um, I hope everybody enjoys, has enjoyed, or continues to enjoy. Uh, C. Holland, thank you so much for being here. We love you, and we always appreciate that you carve out the time for us, especially since the time difference is rough for you. Yes, and it, it's always great to have you. Yeah. Every time. Uh, Marcus, you're incredible. What can I say? I mean, look at this. It's beautiful. Look, look what you've created. It's, <laughs> it's a shame that uh, the pilot of the deck isn't better, but the deck is... <laughs> <laughs> the curve is just giving you the finger. It's just... Seems it's appropriate. just like, fuck you, yeah, Joe. Yeah, seems totally appropriate. <laughs> yeah, very, very correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, Erica, thank you so much for being here and playing us uh, so we can test out this new deck. That's right. Uh, we love you so much. We're, we're one and one, so we're coming for you, Espion <laughs> son. <laughs> Next time. Uh, Lord Sephiroth, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um we really appreciate you coming back. Yeah, good to see you again, yeah. as always. And Man in the Hat, thank you so much for being uh, so consistently here. That's right. Uh, it really, truly does mean a lot to us. That's right. Um, and Lord Savrov gives a wave with a <laughs> what looks to me like uh, one of those like rubber gloves that you like blow up into a oh, balloon. Oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah, sure. It's just a very big pink hand. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so guess what, everybody? Like I said, that's going to be the end of this particular stream. Thank you all so very much for watching. As I said, I really hope everybody enjoyed. We will be back uh, next week with more Magic the Gathering. Uh, as a reminder to folks, uh, if you did not hear your name just read off, but you were watching us tonight, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we didn't see you in chat, which is why you didn't hear your name read off. But we still appreciate you being here. Uh, if you do want your name read off in the future, just pop in a chat, say hey, at minimum. Uh, you'll still get that shout out here at the end. You're always welcome to say more. We would love for you to say more. But if you're not comfortable doing so, no worries whatsoever. Like I said, please accept our blanket thank you here at the end. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back. Uh, if you're only here for Magic the Gathering content, we'll be back next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we are every Magic Monday uh, for, as we said, Outlaws at Thunder Junction. Or uh, So stay tuned for that. Um, but otherwise, we'll be back on Friday live here again at 8 p.m. Eastern for more God of War Ragnarok. Yes. So, uh, between now and the next time that we see you, whenever that happens to be, please continue to stay safe and happy and healthy. That is to you and yours, super important. And for now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I've been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video or stream of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>